Hello there, and welcome to another of the infamous uh, metal department pre-auction highlight reels. It's not a podcast, it's a highlight reel. And um, this, obviously, to give you a preview of just a few of our favorite lots from the auction on the 18th of April. Uh, we're here in the boardroom, and Robert and I have gathered here today. It's just the gruesome twosome. Uh, Harry's escaped the camera, and um, we're going to talk you through five of uh, our favorite lots. Uh, there's a number of uh, videos also being prepared for Facebook and Instagram um, in more bite-sized chunks, but this is the slightly uh, longer version um, for all of you who would uh, who'd like to watch. So, um, as always, the sale begins with uh, the pre-bidding, which is very much open. Everything is up on Spink Live. The print catalogue will probably be with you now. Um, it's going to be another bumper one and uh, exactly 400 lots in the sale. And um, again, we've been very lucky to have consigned uh, a number of items uh, direct from families. Four of the five lots we have on the table with us uh, direct from family. And the fifth one hasn't been on the market for probably half a century, so not too bad. Um, beyond that, you've got the usual spread of good single campaign medals, lots of interesting items to the 88th um, in the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, there's a, a number of very interesting polar exploration groups. We've got a special section of special forces awards uh, and a, a choice collection of uh, awards for Egypt as well. So there really is something for everyone, um, or we hope so at least. And the first lot I'm going to cover is the front cover lot, again from the family, never been on the market, and that is lot 142. Uh, and that is uh, the first one uh, on my tray. And see, it's outstanding uh, Lucknow 1857 Victoria Cross pair awarded to Captain Hastings Edward Harrington of the famous Bengal Horse Artillery. Um, as you can see, just two awards he earned, but they are uh, very fine indeed. You've obviously got his Victoria Cross uh, dated on the reverse for the actions uh, he, he committed in uh, November 1857 and his three clasped. Um, Mutiny Medal uh, with the class for Delhi, Relief of Lucknow and Lucknow. Uh, Harrington was perhaps the, uh, I would say, the unluckiest man not to receive um, the Victoria Cross immediately for his actions during the Indian Mutiny. Um, probably his own fault though, because he was wounded on no less than three occasions. And on two of those occasions, uh, he was basically presumed killed um, due to the severity of, of the wounds he'd suffered. So one of the actions, for example, uh, he'd personally received a notification from Sir Colin Campbell that he would um, receive the Victoria Cross and his name was very much on the list. And then the very next day he went into action and got himself so severely wounded that his name was struck off the list uh, to be sent back to London for the VCs to be awarded. And so uh, he missed out on the immediate VC. Uh, obviously at that time, uh, the cross could not be awarded posthumously. And thankfully, during the Indian Mutiny, we saw the use of the Clause 13 uh, in, in the statutes of, of the VC, uh, which meant that um, the, the comrades of a, an individual soldier could put their name forward for having been you know, singularly brave, uh, several actions over a period, or individual actions, like in this case. And the Bengal Horse Artillery earned five, one to an officer, this is the one, uh, one to an NCO, uh, Rough Rider Jennings, and then three two gunners, uh, which have uh, come up onto the market. Bengal Horse Artillery, absolutely legendary. Their, their service, their uniform, they're, they're highly um, celebrated. And this is probably the best, um, the best VC um, that they were, they were awarded. Um, when you read his story, he's unlike so many of uh, those VC winners from the mutiny in that you can really follow his whole career from when he was born through to when he died at the tender age of just 29, um, because obviously three wounds out in India, um, Harrington then came back to England to have treatment to remove uh, a spent bullet which was lodged in his hip and was causing him severe pain and, and issues to his back. Um, he went up to Buckingham Palace to receive his VC from the hands of the Queen, and then proceeded back out to, to India to rejoin his regiment, um, suffered with, with cholera and, um, Sadly, uh, he died at Agra in July 1861. We've got an absolutely stunning reproduction of a portrait of him. 
and a late addition to the catalogue, um, again, you, you can't have missed it, um, is this absolutely stunning, it's an absolute clonker. Uh, it's his um, 1850 to 1853 uh, cavalry sabre um, pre presentation piece, obviously given to him before he went out on campaign um, from, from one of his family members, again, with his initials, a lovely um, numbered Wilkinson blade, and then um, Harrington was a um, very godly individual, um, devoted himself to, to the service, uh, to the Queen and to God, and um, the, the blade has this, this touching inscription, to Queen, to country, but oh, most to thee, to give my life, who gives thy life for me. So again, a really touching object, something that was there with him throughout the campaign, and there it is, never been on the market before, 120 to 150,000 pounds. Let's see what happens on the day. So Indian Mutiny, um, the Victoria Cross, the greatest gallantry award of all. And then we move on to something slightly different. Lot 200, again, consigned by the family. And what we have here is the Tientsin Provisional Government uh, Gold Medal. Just a dozen of these were made, um, a few more in silver and, and a number more in bronze, and we've seen a few of those through our hands in the years. But uh, as far as I can tell, this is the first uh, of these very rare, um, very highly sought after Tientsin Provisional Government gold medals, uh, just shy of 100 grams of solid gold. So again, it's a good heavy piece in the hand. And this is awarded to Major Mokla of the Indian Army, um, who was the governor of the police, um, set up when the uh, Provisional Government was put in in Tientsin from July 1900. Um, to when the Qing um, government took over in August 1902 and awarded to you know, senior officers who'd represented and, and made sure everything was running smoothly. Again, the seven flags um, of, of, the, um, of the nations who, who supported and were part of the campaign. You know, thankfully, the Union Jack at the centre, where it should be, front and centre. And um, again, we've obviously got Major Mockler's group, which is, a, again, a fantastic combination lovely mid-late Victorian service. Um, again, his story is superb. Go and have a read of it. He was an observer um, in the Russo-Japanese War, got the medal for that. Uh, also has a, a bronze life-saving medal. You know, what's not to like? Um, 10 to 15,000. Um, we've already got a, a bid on this. I can. I had a quick quick sneak peek on uh, Spink Live. So somebody is, has clocked this. But again, it's one of the rarities uh, of the you know, China 1900 campaign. Again, when will you find another one? Beautifully named on the rim, never been on the market. Uh, what's more uh, to like? So the third and final of the lots I would like to talk about, again, offered by the family. Um, this time, lot number 222. And um, that is the uh, CGM, the Conspicuous Gallantry Medal, flying. Uh, awarded to uh, Warrant Officer Bailey of the Royal Air Force. Um, again, from the northeast, uh, where this group's come from, served with 78 Squadron, uh, completed 29 ops over enemy territory uh, when they were detailed to attack the um, V1 rocket sites. Um, and on the way, sort of leaving uh, the bombing zone, attacked by fighters, dreadfully shot up, um, aircraft in flames, and the, the captain gave the order to, to bail out. Bailey basically ignored those orders, saw the mid-upper gunner, was stuck in the turret, flames, you know, licking at his feet, um, potentially going to, you know, just kill him out, burn him outright. He went through the flames, saved the life of the mid-upper gunner, and then assisted um, the captain of the aircraft in, in getting it home. Um, he suffered severe wounds to his hands, his legs, and his face. Um, and had a, a very long period of convalescence. And the CGM is an extremely rare gallantry award in all periods, but especially in the Second World War. And again, CGM flying, it's one of the great rarities. Um, it's a super thing, never been on the market with his full flying log books, campaign medals, photographs, everything you could possibly want um, if you're an RAF collector for the Second World War. So that's the final lot I'm going to um, regale you with. Again, lot 222, 15 to 20,000, and we'll see what happens on the day. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll pass you over to Robert now. Thank you very much indeed, Marcus. And um, so we saw a, a bronze cross uh, a little while ago. I'm now going to show you a gold one. And here 
we have the fantastic Army Gold Cross, small Army Gold Medal with two clasps, and the Companion of the Order of the Bath group, awarded to a chap called Colonel William Kelly of the 24th 2nd Warwickshire Regiment of Foot. Now, this is a truly remarkable group. Um, I've never been involved in, in selling an Army Gold Cross at Spink before, so as those of you who are regular viewers um, and listeners will know, the Napoleonic Wars is my great love. And so uh, when this came in, I obviously got very, very excited indeed. And um, I uh, will be on the rostrum for this group, and uh, I'm sure it will go to a uh, really, really good home. So Colonel William Kelly, who was he? Well, he served in the 24th foot from 1787 until 1818, a remarkable 31 years of service in one regiment. Um, and also what's very interesting, and I shall come back to this in a moment, in, is that during his career, he served in America, in Canada, South Africa, Portugal, Spain, India and Nepal. And so a remarkable um, amount of service across the globe during this period of military history. It is a, also a unique award to the 24th foot. So um, the Gold Cross is, of course, uh, named with his regiment, the 24th. There is no other Gold Cross uh, with that regiment on it, which again is quite exciting. Um, so for the regimental collector, of course, the 24th became a very famous regiment, uh, as I'm sure you will all know for the, uh, the Zulu Wars, 1878-79. Um, during this period, of course, they are the second Warwickshire Regiment of Foot, um, and not as famous as they were to become. But nevertheless, for the regimental collector, I hope you'll agree that is quite exciting of its own right. So William Kelly, originally from Ireland, and indeed from a very um, prominent local family. And again, I'll come back to that in just a second. But Kelly commanded his regiment uh, with great skill and gallantry during the Peninsular War. And indeed, his gold cross is for the battles of Fuentes de Onoro in 1811, Salamanca in 1812, Vitoria in 1813, and the Pyrenees, the sort of 1813, 1814. Um, and in fact, he was wounded in action as well at uh, something known as the Heights of Echelar during the Pyrenees campaign. Um, and uh, again, this possibly, or quite possibly led to his early demise. Now, he, after the Peninsular War, he was selected to go out to um, command a brigade during the Anglo-Nepal War of 1814-1816, uh, for which he was mentioned in dispatches but went home early because um, of this wound. And it's rather sad that um, he, he got back to England, um, but died in Wiltshire um, before he could make his way back to his family in Ireland. Um, he had four brothers, and of those four brothers, two of them were also army officers. Uh, one entered the church, and one became the mayor of Armagh. And um, you'll notice in the catalogue that we also have a few um, related medals in, uh, in and around the Gold Cross group. Uh, one is a, a Borough of Armagh Gold Medal, and the other is another companion of the Order of the Bath, which was awarded to one of his brothers, um, who was very prominent at the Battle of Waterloo. Again, you can read all about that in the catalogue, and there's a marvellous portrait of this brother reproduced again um, for you all to look at. There is a, a very touching memorial to Kelly in uh, the church in which he was buried in Wiltshire. And I think before moving on to the final group, um, that is worth reading out in full because it is surely the last word um, and, and actually is, 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 means quite a lot. Um, Colonel Kelly's services were extended to the four quarters of the globe. He was severely wounded at the Battle of the Pyrenees and exhausted afterwards by his successful exertions in the Nepal War in India. He returned only to breathe his last with his friends, admired him in his profession as a soldier and esteemed by all as a man. And um, what, what more needs to be said, really? Uh, so do read about him in the catalogue. These medals comprise lot 51 with an estimate of 50 to 70,000 pounds. Um, worth all of that for the reasons I've already stated, 
and um, I'm looking forward to being on the rostrum to seeing them sell well on the 18th. So to, uh, to end then, I'm staying with the Napoleonic Wars, but going from the army to the navy. And here is a remarkable, again, a group of three to a naval officer, uh, Admiral Sir John Hill. Now here we have his two clasp Naval General Service Medal for the Battle of the Nile in August 1798 and the Egypt campaign shortly afterwards, his uh, Sultan's Gold Medal uh, for Egypt, 1801, and his Silver Battle of the Nile Medal. And a remarkable grouping, again, that has come from a direct descendant and so never been on the market before. And it is definitely unusual to have a um, gold medal and indeed a silver Nile medal directly attributed to an individual because, of course, unlike the NGSM, they are not named as a matter of course. So uh, Admiral Hill, as a young man, was first lieutenant aboard HMS Minotaur at the Battle of the Nile. And indeed, the Minotaur was very much in the thick of the fighting. Again, you can read all about this in the catalogue, but she is basically credited with saving Nelson's own ship, the Vanguard, when the Vanguard was under incredibly heavy fire from the opposing French vessels. And indeed, Hill wrote an account about how his commanding officer, Captain Thomas Lewis, went aboard the Vanguard towards the end of the battle and met Nelson and exchanged some very moving words uh, after Nelson had been badly wounded, thought he might die from this head wound, and, um, and had this exchange of words with Lewis where he thanked him for his great service that undoubtedly Hill had a lot to do with making happen. Hill was then promoted because of his actions at the Nile, promoted to commander, and then commanded his own ship, uh, a transport vessel, at the uh, invasion of Egypt, which finally saw Napoleon's French forces expelled from, from the country, which led then to the reward of the gold medal from the Sultan uh, of Egypt. And um, he then went into a, a series of uh, commands of transport vessels. And so possibly Hill's career, uh, in, maybe in his eyes, took a little bit of a downturn because he wasn't promoted into uh, dashing around in frigates or smaller vessels and shooting up the French and all that sort of thing. Um, he never saw uh, action again in a large fleet battle, but he commanded a lot of transport vessels. And um, as again, as you can read about in the catalogue, due to um, uh, knowing a few people in the right circles, by the time of the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, he ended up in command of all the transport vessels that took the British army from Britain to the Low Countries, to the Duke of Wellington, uh, in time for the Great Battle on the 18th of June, 1815. And it is fascinatingly recorded that he and Wellington exchanged letters, that Wellington mentioned him in dispatches for his good work. Uh, uh, his army was brought over to the Low Countries with uh, something like the loss of two horses and one man, a remarkable feat considering the thousands of men and the way in which they were transported. And what I particularly liked from doing my research on him is that Hill is, of course, mentioned in the famous uh, Waterloo Journal by Captain Cavalier Mercer of the Royal Horse Artillery, who talks about uh, his ship docking at Ostend and uh, being boarded by Captain Hill and a group of rough sailors who then proceeded to throw Mercer's uh, artillery equipment and most of his horses over the side of the ship into the sea uh, and uh, to get the ship unloaded as quickly as possible to then go back for the next load. And um, Hill basically said, well, that's the Duke of Wellington's orders. Sir, you're going to have to get used to it. You please get off the ship as quickly as possible. So a rather amusing exchange there that, again, you can read about in the catalogue. Uh, and what's also rather nice is that Hill and Wellington remained in touch in later life. And um, they lived very close to each other in Walmer, down on the south coast. And uh, indeed, Hill actually participated in the great Duke's funeral in September of 1852. And so a remarkable trio of medals with lots of good story. We also have the Crimea medals of the Admiral's son coming up as well. And uh, there's a great story to go with that. He was mentioned in dispatches for the storming of the Redan. 
and um, lots and lots of good family history here. So Admiral Hill's medals comprise lot 55 in this sale with an estimate of 10 to 12,000 pounds. And I hope they are going to get lots of the Napoleonic naval enthusiasts excited on the day. Again, I'll be on the rostrum for this lot uh, to see them go to a good home. So that brings to an end what I have to talk about. I hope you've enjoyed what both of us have had to speak about today in this little video. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And uh, we look forward to seeing lots of you either in the room or watching online on the day. And um, for what promises to be another exceptional auction of orders, decorations and medals here at Spink. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.